Hi, I'm Greta Schiller, director of Before Stonewall. Before Stonewall tells the story of the making of America's gay and lesbian community by looking at the individual in history, the history and individual from the turn of the century to 1969, which the Stonewall riots are considered basically the turning point for the birth of America's and the world's modern gay liberation movement. 30 years Teddy Award, 30th anniversary of the Teddy Award, um, 30 years of queer films, certainly not queer history, but um, what, what, is your, what is your take on that? What, what, how do you feel about those 30 years of queer films that have been coming to Berlin? Well, it's, a, it's an amazing ship. It's like, as you know, before Stonewall screen, before the Teddies. Like, Teddies didn't, mm, the Teddy exactly. Award wasn't even existent at when we screened, screened before Stonewall. So the, it was like, so it's a revolutionary thing to even, I mean, one German uh, television station said, well, how can a people who don't exist have a history? I mean, that's the level that people were wow. at then, you know? Wow. So, um, so for me, and then there were like maybe three or four gay festivals in the whole world at the time. Yeah. So it was a, so now, coming here now, happy birthday, Teddy, by the way, <laughs> coming here now, and seeing the incredible numbers of films and how much like gay top gay GLBT issues or stories are woven into uh, films that aren't necessarily labeled as gay films, mm -hmm. like that that Argentinian Chilean feature Rara. Rara, yeah. yeah, yeah, which was which I went to see and it was in the Generation program. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. That I mean, so you know, history is not linear. Mm -hmm. It's you exactly. know, you, you, it goes up and down, yeah. back and forth. But, but this is, um, I think they're, yeah. But there's always this point where at some point, you know, like institutions or like power structures start to realize that you exist and accept you and you become part of like a big festival or whatever. And do you th is that an achievement or do you have to look at it critically? It's a, that's, you know, it's so, that's a really, really good question. And because, of course, I come from the generation where really where queer wasn't about, it was just about, it was about creating a community of difference and an alternative way of being and relating to people and having sort of an underground culture. So I have very mixed feelings about it being mainstreamed. Right. You know, right. it's not it's not my exactly my cup of tea. Yeah. I'm not that excited about it. <laughs> What's the danger? What's what why do you why don't With you being come it? becoming just like everyone else. Yeah. I mean, which apparently most gay people want to be you accepted see. and embraced just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's not been really something I've ever been terribly interested in. I've mm -hmm. been much more interested in, you know, sort of looking at different kinds of cultures and ways of, of being that um, allow for individuality at the same time as a kind of communal the, the communal individuality thing of queer culture I've always really loved mm -hmm. let's go back to before Stonewall and and really how you even had the idea to start you know creating such a film project you know it's a, it, again because it was a long time ago I've made a lot of movies since then sometimes I have to like <laughs> my own memory was like oh my goodness and a friend of mine uh, was at the screening. A friend of mine, Ben Gibson, who is now the head of your German film school, right. by the way, just mm -hmm. began. Mm -hmm. And he was a films distributor uh, in the early 80s. Well, that was in New York? And no. in, in the UK. He was in London. He's okay. English. Okay. But he came to the retro screening at the Zoopalaz. Right. So okay. he said something which I had completely, like, he said, the thing is, it's, the film is completely in the context of what um, leftist and progressive filmmakers were doing in the s late 70s, early 80s, which is it was the first time that um, people like were telling their own stories. Mm. There were no experts saying, mm. talking about, you know, women or gays or lifestyle, or whatever. It was I was telling the story through the experiences of the people who lived them. Mm -hmm. That was never. That was just not done. That mm. was just beginning to be done at that time. But when did this conscience in yourself like grow 
where you knew, oh, I really have to make this film. It's going to be really important for maybe the people that live now, for coming generations. I never thought, I never, never thought it was going to be important okay. for any. I mean, okay. lived totally in the moment. I was very young. I was in my mid twenties. I lived in the moment. Right. I never thought I was going to do something that was going to have a life thirty yeah, yeah, yeah. years later, which is the greatest honor, of course, for a filmmaker yes. to have that. Um, but. What, what mo well, I was always I, I was a, I was a kid who read the histories in the biographies in the library. You know, I was a kid who was always interested in people's lives and, and, and in history. And as I became I happened to grow up in um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, which was I was a townie, not my mom was a secretary, but I was at the university, the university and it was a real hotbed of SDS, gay liberation. Um, women's liberation. So I was exposed to all these ideas in high school. So I began to s understand. So I began to think and, you know, so I probably thought differently than most people in my generation because of where I happen to live and that I follow things. And it's funny because in doing, in making Before Snowball, I could say that I really set the pattern for many of the movies I would make because what I what it did it was make me very interested in the role of the individual in society and the role of history on the individual and how the two went back and forth. And queer people have always been left out of history. And so that's what motivated me. I, I was what I, I did I was I was interested in the topic. Mm -hmm. And that's what motivated me, I would say. Mm -hmm. And were you a student still? Back I know I had. Gra I was already. I had already graduated, and I had co-produced a film called Greetings from Washington D.C., which was on the first uh, National March for Gay Rights in 1979. Mm -hmm. And then Robert Rosenberg, who became the film's co-director, had this. He we he came to me with this idea based on. Some a friend of his research. I can't exactly remember. I really should have read up on this to prepare. But anyway, so then we developed the concept of were the first people to get money from the public television network in America for any gay topic film. So th this means it was broadcast on PBS too. Or? Yes, it was a it was the first gay film broadcast on PBS. Wow. Gay subject. What, what what kind of reactions did you get? We got the range from half the people sent letters saying, you saved my life, this is such an important film, I never had any validity for my existence, I want everyone to see this movie. And then the other half were like, this is the most filthy, horrible, degenerate thing that I'm going to stop supporting public television. Et cetera, et cetera. So we're we I have all those those pros and cons letters. We're gonna we're, now that you can do so much digitally. Mm. So we're probably gonna do something with that around the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. Wow. So you're still involved with queer queer issues in terms of film. Like well, I, I I am because I made you know 10 films on different queer history and I'm exactly producing my partner Andrea Weiss's film, which is about gay and lesbian life under Franco in Spain. Wow. And re reclaiming that that um, history, and but I'm doing films on um, my last couple of films. Oddly enough, have been on science and another love of my youth, but on science and humanity, shall we say? Okay. And how did that develop? Like, how did your film career after Before Stonewall uh, develop? Or like what? Well, it's kind of like a Russian doll thing, because mm. before, before mm -hmm. there was the research for Before Stonewall was so extensive we couldn't keep put everything in it. Andrea did an amazing job, and it was her team of researchers. Um, and then, and there was a clip that we discovered around the uh, war, during World War II in America. Mm. Uh, uh, women started doing things that they hadn't been allowed to do because the men were all, right. many men were out at war. So uh, one of the things that they did was they played live music in the big band era. Mm. And we discovered this footage of something called the International Sweethearts of Rhythm, America's hottest all-girl band. <laughs> and we were like, wow, that <laughs> is an amazing, we have to make, uh, are any of these women a lie? And they were, so we made a film, and there was archive film of them. So we made a film about them. And then making that film, 
when I interviewed one of the women, Tiny Davis, I found out that she was a lesbian and had lived with her partner for 40 years in Chicago. And they went on to play music together after the Sweetheart. So then we made Tiny and Ruby Hell Diving Women, which won a teddy wow. also. And then, and then, so, you know, th one thing off, and then I can't even remember what the next film was, but Paris was a woman or, I can't remember the mm -hmm. order right now. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you, like even in these days, use film as a, as a weapon, political weapon? What, what, what does it offer, you know, as a medium? You mean in general? Well, not in general, but really these days, like the times well, we're living right now. You know, I think, that, I think that cinema still inspires and informs if it's done well. Not informs like, you know, your talking head PBS. I've heard there's some, been some of the, I mean, that kind of standard blah, 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 and talking then a picture. Head, yeah. Talk, yeah. But, you know, we used, I mean, Talking Heads and Before Stonewall was crucial because no queer people had ever had been, been on TV. To, no, it's Eddie, Openly, so it was yeah, really yeah, yeah, important, yeah. you know? So, but, but it depends on who speaks, right? If it's only like the whatever scientist, academic, blah, speaks, blah, blah, blah. Depends on who speaks, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. That's very, that's exactly right. It depends on who speaks. But, um, what I was amazed with, with, with the, with the, at the screening, just, um, was how many young people actually came wow. and spoke to me afterwards and said they were how how um, excited they were because they d still didn't hadn't been heard any of this history. It's not. It's like you know only a special high school that's going or college that's going to include queer history in the in history, oh, so and nice. so that was really that that's the best. What did they, what that's else the did they flattering. ask? What did they ask, or what did they? Well, they were just like, wow, this is so. It, this was so. Um, first of all, they said it wasn't boring. Oh, okay. Like they think of history films as boring. They're like, wow, that was not boring. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining queer and history. The, yeah. And they said they couldn't believe it was made 30 years ago because the pacing just kept moving. Added, okay, well, yeah. And they just went crazy over the archive because have you seen it? Yes, yeah. but I watched it on my laptop like years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, and then we just that I, I, even I was like there was just really fun things we did with the archive where we used like when the guys are talking about mm -hmm. being recruited and how many gay men were in the army and how looking at all these beautiful bodies exercising and then I, when we found those images of those exercise videos we were like looks just like those physique magazines right. which were they were called physique but they were sort of soft core you know gay porn so it there was a, a women's softball game rereading the images in the eyes of someone who would have needed imagery to validate mm. their lives. Mm. People still need their lives validated. Of course, yeah, that's a human need. Eh? That People still changes. need it. Even, I was, it's funny, because I was, I was living in London when um, Tilda Swinton was becoming, made, being made into a star by Derek Jarman. Right. And so I watched. Oh, so you experienced that era in London? Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. We lived in London in the, in the 90s. We went there like in the 89 to 92, wow. I lived there. Wow. But, and I, and, uh, and what Tilda said was for her coming, coming into being an artist in, within a queer culture, wow was like was like homecoming and she's not even a queer but exactly what i feel right. it's like exactly true there's just something about it so what's the it, what's the task of queer culture queer film in these days what issues topics do you know do we have to address the thing that the beautiful thing about it is every there's it's so, it's so much easier so to make a film yeah, now yeah. than it was then um but like Kiki, did mm -hmm. you see Kiki? Not yet, no. Okay, so Kiki is like you know, the up. It's like wh what the ballroom scene, what these black, gay, and transgender youth in New Black youth are doing in New York, and I saw that film right after I saw the film about Uncle Howard, which was right. like, That's so it's in the yeah. same streets of New York, but yeah. one is like sort of white upper middle class artist bohemian, which yeah. is fascinating to yeah. me, yeah. and then the next is black half street kids struggling transgender marginalized, yeah. marginalized yeah. and it's in the exact same streets City, but yeah. both films are being made they're both important stories yeah yeah
okay. You okay. know, and then the way that oh, there was a scene in Kiki where they're sitting in the projects, the mom and the daughter, and then like a seven-year-old boy, right? Mm -hmm. And the mom is talking about how she came to accept that her son was gonna trans was transitioning. Mm -hmm. And then the little seven-year-old just goes into this like rap about, you know, she can do what she is, how she feels. This totally politically correct, articulate, um, you know, rap about mm. about gender identity. And mm. I thought, wow, the world has fucking changed. Wow. It was incredible. Wow. wow. You know, and it's. I mean, there's always. Well, and as I said in my introduction to um, to my film, you know. Things, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So you still have the vast majority of humanity exactly, yeah, not, not able, about it. not living in the bubble that we live in. Yeah, exactly. But at least the, the people who can get out of there yeah. can come. And, you know, that that's a good... We, I think we sometimes forget that um, gay people and gay culture exist in the larger culture. So the questions of, like, refugees right. or, right. or class or... Um, ethnic or just so many differences that to not forget that yeah what did you what did you take from this experience here from this visit to the Berlinale and the 30th anniversary this one of the Teddies yeah was that there are just so many great queer films now it's yeah. incredible I haven't been I, I and, and of course because uh, the panorama the forum the competition I don't know in the competition were there any yeah. queer themes yeah there, were were, there? there was gay, there was uh, Tachiné the a French filmmaker. Oh, oh, that had a gay theme? Oh, I didn't know that. It's about a young boy gay couple. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, I didn't and know that. And then United States of Love is also, it's a Polish contribution. And they, there is a... What's it called? United States of Love. It's a Polish film. And there is, uh, it's diff It's like small vignettes of uh, different individuals, individuals that live in one city. And there's uh -huh. also one story about a, a lesbian couple. Oh, right. No, so that's right. But it's in the so competition, yeah. It's so now it's a competition, panorama, generation. Everywhere. It's For, everywhere. Form that's, expanded, yeah. like yeah, it's really, it's really everywhere. nice. Great, Very thank great. you so much. Happy for sharing birthday, Teddy. Happy birthday.